Welcome to Period Stories. My name is Dr. Asensio and we'll be speaking about sexually transmitted infections. This is a part six. So we'll be talking about sexually transmitted infections caused by parasites, um, two of which we'll talk about, trichomonas and pubic lice. Let's first talk about trichomonas. It's a very common sexually transmitted infection caused by a parasite called Trichomonas vaginalis, and the symptoms vary. Most people are unaware of infection, and it is spread through sexual intercourse. The vaginal discharge is either white, gray, yellow, or green with frothy texture and an unpleasant smell. Vaginal burning or itching, vaginal spotting or bleeding, red and swollen, frequent need to urinate. You may have pain during urination or sexual intercourse. This is one uh, of the sexually transmitted infections that can get confused with bacterial vaginosis, which is when the pH is off and that can also cause an odor. So it's important for uh, testing to be done to figure out which one uh, the patient has. The best treatment is prevention by using safe sex practices. Diagnosis obtained through a culture in the doctor's office, and usually with medication, this is managed and resolves. Let's talk about pubic lice or crabs. So pubic lice are parasitic insects found primarily in the pubic or genital area of humans. And pubic lice infestation is found you know, all over the world, races, ethnicities, all levels of society. They have three forms, the egg, also called the nit, the nymph, and the adult. And this is outlined in the image here. Pubic lice are usually spread through sexual contact and are most common in adults. If you find them on children, it usually is a sign of sexual exposure or abuse. Pubic lice may be spread by close personal contact or contact with articles such as clothing, bed linens or towels that have been used by an infested person. Now, pubic lice usually are found in the gentle area on the pubic hair, but they may occasionally be found on other coarse hair, such as hair on the legs, armpits, mustache, beard, eyebrows, or eyelashes. Lice found on the head generally are head lice, which is different. That's not pubic lice. Animals do not get or spread pubic lice. So how do you treat it? Well, it's usually a lice killing lotion um, and usually applied uh, to the affected area um, and cleansed afterwards. Usually can be found over the counter or at local you know, drugstore. Um, it's usually safe and effective when used exactly according to the instructions in the package or on the label. Now, once you wash the infested area, towel dry, apply the medication and follow it, um, you still have to wash all those bedding and clothing that have been worn by the infested person uh, during that two to three days before treatment. You want to use hot water and a hot dryer cycle. And for things that cannot be laundered, you either want to dry clean them or store in a sealed plastic bag for two weeks. All sex partners from within the previous month should be informed and they're, that they're at risk for infestation and they should be treated. Um, you want to make sure that you avoid sexual contact with your partner until both have been treated and evaluated to make sure it is gone. Repeat treatment may need to be done if within 9 to 10 days, lice that are live are found. All right? And if you are found with pubic lice, you should be evaluated for other sexually transmitted infections. Again, the main idea is using protection and abstinence is what we are going to be encouraging here. I hope this was helpful. Subscribe to Period Stories.